In this episode of Can I Retire, we have David and Victoria, not Beckham, but hypothetical. And this is another case of, of can I retire or not? We're gonna make sure that you know what you should be doing if you're nearing retirement or you just got into retirement. So today we've got uh, 61 year old David and 61 year old Victoria, and here are their concerns. Number one, they wanna make sure that they never outlive their income. Number two is that they want the greatest returns for the least amount of risk. They can't afford big losses going into retirement. Number three is, is they'll pay their fair share in taxes, but they do not want to pay more, well, one dime more than they have to. Need to make sure that their long-term care and any uh, healthcare issues are taken care of, and then wrap it all up with estate planning. So we're gonna dive right into this case, get going um, right into it here. And the first thing I've got that I wanna show you is we are on the employment tab. We've got David still working at company ABC. He makes $9,000 a month, gave him a little projected cost of inflation of income here of 2%. And again, he's 61 years of age. Now he wants to work until the age of 65. And in his mind, he thinks that's when he's gonna kick on his social security. I'm not saying that he should, but that's what he's currently thinking. His wife, Victoria, is working for XYZ. She makes about $6,000 a month or $72,000 a year. We gave her a 2% cost of living in adjustment for her uh, salary as well. And she's gonna retire at the exact same time as her husband, David, so they can go enjoy the golden years together. If I scroll down to their social security benefits, you can see that very basic, just primary benefits. And David at the age of 65 is going to get approximately $2,900. And Victoria's is the number right below that for $2,600. If I come over here to our cost of living history, you can see that the 10 year average of cost of living adjustment called COLA, right? It's been about 2.75. You can see in 2024, it was 3.2%. 2023 was 8.7, 2022, 5.9. You can see it going all the way back like in 2016, zero. So the 50 year average is 3.7%. We're gonna close that out, but you can see right here, Hey, I only gave them credit for 2.25. I'm gonna try to be very conservative when we're doing this planning. I wanna be ready to handle any curveballs that we are throwing in retirement. So I'm being much more conservative, only 2.25. We don't have any pensions. You can see here down the bottom. So we're gonna to go to the next tab, to the asset tab, and take a look at where their liquid assets are. Now, the video, the thumbnail, this said 61 years of age with about, what, $600,000 in it. And you can see that in David's scenario here, his 401k, he has $300,000 even, and he's putting away $1,000 a month for the next four years or so before he retires. Victoria has a 401k, she has $200,000, and she's putting $1,000 a month away as well. They also have a checking and savings, 5,000, and they have a, we'll call it a money market. We need to switch this down here to money market. I will come back and there it is right there and they've got $95,000 in the money market. So a total of $60,000 of liquid net worth. Um, and then you can come down here, you can see they have a home uh, jointly owned for about $700,000. Now, one thing that you'll hear me talk about often is, is um, this is very, very common when someone in their 60s and they're getting near retirement. I wish they would have done some after-tax dollars here at a little bit earlier age. I wanna see more balance between their pre-tax dollars, that's their money going into their 401ks, and after-tax dollars and even Roth money. So 61 years of age, a little more ideally here would have been if they would have had some of that Roth money, that would have been fantastic. They don't, but that's okay. This is a very common case. It's okay if it's you too. We're gonna to show you how to, how, to, how to fix that problem. So I jump over to their expense tab. Now I could easily just come up here and say they wanted six, seven, eight thousand dollars a month. And I've done that in prior videos, but today I broke it down again, just a little bit more. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you this, but let's start with the inflation. The current inflation over the last 10 years is 2.82%. We could argue this one all day long, but that's what we're gonna show today. If you wanna show it higher, fantastic. When you give us a call, you work with one of our advisors, you can see we'll put any number that you want into that um, inflation column. 110 year average has been 3.27%, but you say, well, Tony, why am I only showing 2.52% right here? Well, it's because not everything is going to be, have inflation on it. For instance, one of their main expenses is their house payment. 
and that's currently $1,800 a month. Well, that's gonna stay the same. It's a 30 year locked in rate, right? It's not gonna go up every single year. So I'm using a flat $1,800 a month. We'll just assume this included PITI, principal and interest and taxes and insurance. But that's gonna stop in the year 2030, September of 2030. So, if we come down to the next line, which is our real estate taxes right here, I'm highlighting that in blue for you. You can see those are, let's say they're $700 a month and there is an inflation of 3.27% right there. And that's gonna go on for the rest of our lives. So we're always gonna have that increasing until the day we kick the bucket. And then we got our homeowner's insurance of $600, again with inflation going on forever. We've got $500 a month for utilities, gas and electric. Water, $125. Cable, phone, internet, $175. Maintenance, $100. House cleaning, $225. I come down here to daily living expenses. They're estimating that they're going to spend about $600 a month in um, their groceries. Dining out, they like to go to some nice places every now and then, so they're going to put $400 a month in spending there. Again, all with inflation riders on every single one of these. $150 a month for clothing and then $175 a month for personal care, whatever, you know, that falls under that category. Um, I come down and let's just grab, let's say transportation. He wanted to buy a car. They're paid for free and clear right now. He's getting ready to buy one. He thinks this is probably what he's going to be spending for the rest of his life. Again, with inflation for one car for their family. Auto insurance, 175, fuel 250 and some repairs for uh, a few bucks in there. I wanna jump down here to the entertainment side. You can see we've got some parties. We got a little bit of money for some membership dues, but right here is important. This is the vacation side of it. When they go to retire at the age of 65, we call this our go-go years. These are the years where you're probably gonna to wanna to be traveling, spending time with kids. Maybe you're, you're, you got the camp or you're going all across the country or maybe traveling internationally. Go-go years. But as we get older, we go from go-go years to slow-go years to no-go years. And so they wanted to have their go-go years of $1,000 a month to be going all the way till the, or the year of 2040. So the year 2040, that's going to stop. We're, we're just gonna cut it off. That's about age 77, I think. So this is how I'm coming up with their monthly expenses and their uh, average inflation rate. Now this obviously needs to be updated a couple times a year, at least to make sure that all is gonna run just fine. So let's just run over with those expensive and what their current assets are, and let's just see if they run out of money or not. So you can see right here at the age of 100 for David and Victoria, uh, neither one of them run out of money. They still have over $600,000 in their liquid assets. They're going to be just fine um, in this first scenario. So let's scroll down here. Let's kind of take a look at what's happening. Where is the money coming in from? Where is it coming out of? What's going on? So here we are in 2028 at the age of 65, and they have $5,500 a month in Social Security. Here you can see in green numbers what David's is and what Victoria's is. And then if I come down to 2029, a year later, you can see that Social Security going up just a little bit. That's that cost of living adjustment that we were just talking about on the first tab. And again, in the next year at 67, at 68 years of age, you can see it going up a little bit more, 69 and on and on and on. If I come back up across this top row in the year 2028, you can see that they want about $9,000 or they need that much in living expenses in about five years from now. So $7,800, almost $8,000 in today's environment feels more like $9,000 in about five years from now. So we're going to have to pull out in that first year of retirement about $4,000 a month right here, this red number, directly out of their retirement savings to maintain their standard of living. And then you can see the very next year, it's a little bit less then it goes down just a little bit. Now, what happens right in here? Remember, this is about the time where the, the, the mortgage is going to be paid off. So that's why you can see that number coming down just a little bit through here. And then it starts coming back up until right about right there in 20 year 2040. I'm going to highlight it here for you. They're 77 years of age and that income that they're pulling out of their assets or the withdrawals that they're taking drops off because they no longer have a house payment. So that obviously is going to help the assets continue to grow for them, which it does. And we can scroll all the way to the bottom. And even though that the cost of living goes up or the expenses go up every single year because of inflation, they are outliving their money.
So first round, it looks pretty good, but let's go over and let's get a little tough on them and let's let's stress test this. Let's take a look at you know what happens if right when they retire that they have some market challenges. The market goes down, down, down. And I wanna show what I'm considering a bad situation here. So in 2028, they just retired and the market goes down 10%. And then the very next year, it's down 13%. And the very next year, it's down 23%. Remember, they've been pulling money out of their portfolio every single year to maintain that standard of living. Well, if this happens, which I would never let this happen, I like having other assets put to the side for a rainy day for something like this to happen to allow that portfolio to rebound and um, not keep draining the assets when the market's being uh, mean to us. So if, uh, if this did happen, you could take a look, the money does not last to over age 100. It dies about 10 years early here uh, at the age of 91. So we don't want this to happen, obviously. So we wanna make sure we're in the right uh, risk tolerance. We've got, we're in the right portfolios. We're monitoring it um, appropriately. But let's just go in and do one thing. Let's make one little change to this portfolio here. And they're a big believer that they don't wanna pay more in taxes than they have to. So if I jump over to my tax tab here, Let's just see by doing a basic couple Roth conversions, does it make any sense? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Now, if you believe in all of your heart that taxes are going to be lower in the future, this is not for you. But if you believe there might be a probability with all our national debt being at all time high with the struggles that social security system has and all of our other government programs, if you think that taxes might be higher in the future, then you should look at this. Why not take a look at considering, hey, listen, I'm not getting help from my financial advisor or maybe my accountant or CPA. Does, does tax planning make sense for me? It doesn't matter if your portfolio is this big or this big, you deserve the best. And you need to make sure you're taking advantage of all the tax advantages out there for you for, that are available to you. So let's just pretend that I just do a small amount. I just do some small conversions over a four year period, allows you a little $30,000 a year, nothing big, just, some, just something small. And if I do that, you can see the projected lifetime tax currently, if we do nothing, is about $655,000. That's over their entire lifetime. They make it to age 100. But if we do just some basic tax planning here, just very basic Roth conversions for a couple years, four years in this example, we, we drop this down, we get the required minimum distributions that's going to happen in their 70s, we get those down below the standard deduction and we save them almost a couple hundred thousand dollars, 185 in this particular example. So we're moving in the right direction. Any money that we can save legally and ethically um, is, is something to sign me up for. I, I wanna learn something about it. And you all have to remember, that here in about 18 months or so, less than that, January of, uh, 1st of 2026, tax rates are brackets or they're going up. So now is the time to be doing tax planning. Uh, time is uh, running against us here. So let's take a look. All I simply did was do a little bit of tax planning. I made that one simple little change. And if you all recall that that money was about $600,000, it added a couple hundred thousand dollars more to the overall plan, which we'll sign up for that every single day of the week but let's go stress test this portfolio. Did it help if we have a bad economical situation where we have those three bad years, did it help us make that money last any longer? And if you remember in the first scenario, it died out right between the ages of 90 and 91. So now we're gonna scroll down, did tax planning help? And you can see that it added about five to six years just by doing a couple Roth conversions. I took no extra risk in the market, just implemented some legal tax rules there for us. So you can see right there, it went all the way to age 96. So let's go back and take a look. Um, now that we've done some tax planning, we still have a couple gaps going on here that we need to talk about. And the first one is, is not everybody likes talking about it, but it's life insurance. And so in this particular example, maybe the kids have moved out and most people think, you know what? The kids are gone. The house is about paid for. We really don't need any life insurance. And I support whatever you decide, but it's my responsibility as a fiduciary to simply show you risk and exposure and you determine if that's the risk that you want to take on or not. So right here in this example, you can see if something happened to David currently right now, 
then it could cause a little bit of challenge to Victoria for the rest of her life. Would she have enough money to maintain that same standard of living? So the system's saying here, you know, if, if we reduced our expenses by down to about 70%, then maybe a little bit of uh, life insurance would help out here. I'm not saying it's for everybody. I'm just simply saying a conversation that we can dot the I's, cross the T's, and mark it off. If it's not a concern for you, then we'll move right on. But if it's something that you wanna have a conversation about, it's something that we wanna make sure that we've got it checked off on our, our, our list here. And the biggest one that everybody hates talking about is long-term care. And unfortunately, I hate to break the news to you, but it's usually the number one reason a financial plan could fall apart. So everything's trucking along really well, and then someday down the road, either you're going to die, or you're going to have health problems, and then die. So I want you to be prepared for that day to happen. And the one rule that I, or things I hear often from clients are, they'll be like, well, the kids will take care of me. The truth is, is you don't want your kids to take care of you, and most likely the kids love you, but don't put that burden on them. So there are some things that you can implement and, and, and protect your portfolio and your assets so you don't have to put yourself into poverty. Um, this is the current cost of nursing home care in our state. Um, I'm very familiar with this. I put my own mother into a nursing uh, facility, unfortunately, a few years ago. It wasn't quite this much, um, but it was a little more than $5,000 a month to take care of mom. And uh, we also thought she was only gonna be there for a couple months. And by gosh, she lived to be, uh, or in the nursing care there for over a year and a half. So being prepared is what I'm trying to say. We, it's hard to talk about sometimes, but it's really important. You know, when David and Victoria here might need this long-term care, you know, in today's dollars, it's X, but you know, 20, 30 years down the road, here's what it can feel like. $14,000 a month, over $150,000 a year for long-term care protection. It's definitely a conversation you need to have, one that maybe you might want to have or like to have, but definitely something that is really important to make sure, again, that all the T's are crossed, all the I's are dotted, and you have a solid financial plan. So once those are taken care of and done, and then the last step is you want to work with a, the right uh, attorney, someone who's going to help with the estate planning, take care of all those TODs, the PODs, wills, trust, all that fun stuff, right? That uh, most people put off until the last second. You know, I hope today was to give you another case study, another can I retire? What should you be thinking about before you retire? Or maybe you just got into retirement. Reach out to us if you need any help. We're always happy to do a case just like this for you, for your specific family. And as always, remember, to consult a licensed professional who understands your specific goals and dreams.